When it comes to buying your new MacBook, you're going to be presented with a whole load of choices when it comes to customising the components inside. One of these is going to be that internal hard drive, and you'll quickly notice that upgrading from something like 256GB all the way up to 1TB or even 2TB will cost you a lot of money. And there are reasons for that, but there is an alternative. So for many of you out there, you can actually save a lot of money by investing in an external hard drive such as this Samsung T7 which I have here in front of me. The performance on these is probably going to be adequate for many of you out there and so what I want to show you in this video is the differences in performance between the internal and the external SSD hard drive and give you a bit of guidance on choosing one versus the other. For those of you new to my channel, I'm Dixon. Please hit that subscribe button, it really helps me out. Let's go ahead and take a look. Intro please. So let's go ahead and take a look at the pricing on the Apple website. So I'm on the UK store and as I scroll down towards storage, you'll see quite quickly just how expensive it can become. So just a simple upgrade from 256 gigabytes to 512 is 200 pounds, another 400 pounds for a terabyte and then two terabytes is a massive 800 pounds. So this is the base model MacBook Air. And you can see how expensive it can quickly become if you're using that internal storage. So let's just flip over to the Samsung T7, which I just bought, and I decided to buy it in the red color. It was even cheaper, so in the space gray, I think it was around 150 pounds, but this I bought for 133 pounds here in the UK, and this is for a whole terabyte. And in terms of performance, they advertise a read speed of around 1050 megabytes per second. And what I'll do in just a moment is show you the difference in speed. But just looking at the price by itself, you'll see that 133 pounds is a massive saving compared to what we have on the Apple site. So as you can see, I've got the SSD drive plugged directly into my MacBook. So I'll just place that down. And of course we can see that it's here as an option on my desktop and when I double click you'll see that I've just got a file in there and a bit of a library from Final Cut Pro just for practicing. And what I wanted to do was the speed test and I'm going to be using this app which is the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. And I like this just because it gives you a real simple breakdown of what's actually possible according to the write and read speeds. So let's kick it off by going ahead and testing the internal hard drive. And what you'll see straight away is that the write speed is really fast at over 3000 megabytes per second, sometimes getting close to 3200. And the read speeds are kind of similar really, so close to 2900. And what happens is on the app you'll see that we get all of these green ticks and it's just indicating that this is suitable for different types of usage. And, and it's no surprise that this is getting green ticks for everything. Now let's flip it over to the performance of the SSD, so the Samsung T7. So I'm just going to go ahead and scroll down to my external hard drive, click on open, and then I'll start that test up again. And what you'll see is there is a massive difference in performance. So this is around 720 write speed, and then the read speed is just a little bit faster, so around 758. So this can fluctuate a little bit, so this app just keeps repeating the steps, so it gives you a nice idea of what it's like over time. And straight away, you're gonna see many more green ticks, just like before. So it's just a few down here at the bottom that it says it wouldn't be suitable for. But what I want to highlight with this is that even though it is quite a lot slower than that internal hard drive, this is still perfectly capable as a drive for your usage. So I'm just going to click on stop there. And that just gives you a real nice summary of the actual read and write speeds on that disk. And just another quick test, I just want to show you how long it will take to drag and drop quite a large file. So this AirPods Max review video, which I launched the other day, is 66 gigabytes. So let's just go ahead and drag and drop into the SSD and we'll see how long it's going to take. So it's saying about a minute, and this will just give you a quick sense of how long that's going to take. 
So that video is now in on my hard drive, nice and simple. So what I'm going to do now is actually set up a brand new library in Final Cut Pro and I'm going to do that so that I can run everything directly from the external hard drive. So when I click on a new library, I'm going to select my T7 SSD and I'm going to click on save. And then just to make sure that all of the editing and everything else is also done on the hard drive, I'm going to make sure everything is in library so that it's all run directly into the Samsung T7. So I'll press OK. I'm going to go ahead and import some media and I'll go to my SSD where I uploaded the video. So I'm just going to double click on that. We'll import it into my new library that I've just created and we can go ahead and we're going to do a new project and I'll just call this SSD and press OK and I'm going to drag this into the timeline and you see straight away there's absolutely no issues when it comes to scrubbing along that timeline and what I'll do is I'll just hold this up in front of the camera so you see that blue light here and as I'm scrubbing through you'll see it working so it's just to make you see that it is actually using this hard drive so you see that flashing when I stop it will go solid blue. So it's having absolutely no issues rendering that whatsoever on the timeline. And that's with 4K footage. I record my footage using my iPhone XS. So not quite as extensive perhaps as some other 4K content out there. It's not like a raw file or something, but still this is going to be pretty demanding. So as you'll see from the testing, there is a noticeable difference in performance between the internal hard drive and the external hard drive in this case the Samsung T7. But the performance on the T7 was still incredibly good and I think for a lot of day-to-day -day tasks that you're going to be using these will be perfectly adequate. Yes performance is massive on the internal hard drive and I'd say in terms of recommendations if you're going to be using a lot of raw footage perhaps you're doing video editing and lots of rendering that sort of stuff then if you can go ahead and pay that price for it then the internal hard drive makes sense. But otherwise, I'd say that something like this is going to end up saving you a lot of money. And just to reiterate, this was £133 or so around $130. So that is a massive saving. And these are incredibly portable. You can see it in my hand. It's not going to be something that's a pain to carry around. And it just has a short little cable with it. So you're not going to have any issues in that sense. So I hope that testing was useful. If you want me to take a look at anything else, please let me know. Happy to do so. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. Otherwise, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon.